Hi everybody and welcome to Mama TK's channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make hamburger steak and gravy. And the gravy will be from scratch. Let's get started. Okay, first you're going to need some ground beef. You're going to need one chopped up onion. You're going to need some flour. You're going to need your seasoning, salt, black pepper, garlic. You're going to need some beefy onion soup mix or just a regular Lipton onion soup mix. Worcestershire sauce. And this is optional liquid smoke. The liquid smoke will just be for the flavor of the beef. Okay, first we're going to mix everything together in our meat. You're going to use about a tablespoon of black pepper. Have at least one pound or five pounds of ground beef. This here is um, about a pound of ground beef. So you're gonna have one tablespoon of black pepper, one tablespoon of garlic, just a pinch of salt, not a full tablespoon, because the beefy onion mix has salt in it. And we're not gonna use the whole packet on here. We're just gonna need a small amount because it's not that much of meat. And we're going to say so I'm going to the gravy. Okay. You're going to need about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Like I stated before, this is optional, but this will give it some flavor like it was cooked out on the grill, which makes it much better. You guys, hold on. I got to get this open. Let me get it. I'm not going to open this. Gosh, it's giving me a hard time just to get that open. But I got it open. Now I gotta pop the top off and take this off. Okay, that is done. And you're only gonna need uh, half a tablespoon of this, just a dab on your meat, because it'll be very potent and you don't want that. Okay, now that you have all your seasoning in here, you gotta get in here with your hands, you gotta grind it. You gotta get it um, mixed up together. And while you're mixing everything together, make sure you're getting your skillet hot. You can uh, use about two tablespoons of vegetable oil before you put your burgers in your skillet if you would like. But the hamburger meat, if it has fat in it and it's not extremely lean, it will create um, the oil that you're gonna need for partial to make your um, gravy. But if it doesn't create enough, you may need to add some butter or oil. Okay. You want a pretty good sized burger. So, they shrink while cooking. So get your burgers to a good size. You don't want them too, too flat because that's not a hamburger. Right. Okay. Now that your patty is formed, you see that? I want you to see the patty good. See the size of it. That's about a one inch thick or an inch to an inch and a half thick. 
You're gonna place it in your skillet. And you're gonna cook it. Now I cook my burgers well. I don't eat um medium rare meat. Grandma, why you keeping up? Grandma, baby, why you keeping up so much noise this morning? Huh? Why, Grandma, baby, keeping up all that noise? I love you. I love you. You're not gonna talk back to me. I love you. Say I love you, Grandma. See, she keep up all that noise, but now she don't want to speak, y'all. And you're gonna have um, your pan on about medium high. Make it about medium high. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this cook and then we're gonna come back and make the gravy after this is done. Okay, everyone, now that your burger uh, has browned a little on both sides, you're going to take it out of the pan because um, it's going to cook all the way through once we put it back inside of the gravy. You don't want a hard hamburger steak. You, you want it to be moist and juicy. So I'll say cook it for about three minutes on each side, three to four minutes on each side. Uh, also, look at the um, browning on there. And you can tell for the shrinkage of the patties as well. These are homemade hamburger steaks, so they're not going to be perfect. Okay, now, with the oil that is left in there, as you can see, this should be enough oil to start your gravy with. The bottom is covered. What you're going to do is you're going to put your onions in there. You're going to put some onions in there to saute them. And that's about the amount of onions that you need. And you're going to cook these onions until they are translucent. While your onions are in there, you're also going to add some salt and black pepper. Just a little bit. A pinch of black pepper and a pinch of salt for taste. Not a lot, just a pinch. And you're gonna saute these onions. It's gonna take you uh, probably about five minutes to saute them. Now okay, everyone, our onions have um, cook to their translucent and you don't want to burn them. Now we're going to add in some flour. And you're going to use this is you need enough to cover it. That's one tablespoon. That's two tablespoons. And we may need a, and I'm going to put three tablespoons. May need more but we'll see. Let's do this first. It all depends on the amount of oil that's in there. Also, you're going to need to get you a cup of hot water together because after this brown, okay, we're going to need one more oh, yeah. tablespoon. About four and a half tablespoons of flour because you don't want that liquid in tight, you want this stuff to brown, almost burnt. Once it gets to it's like it's burnt, then you know it's ready to um, add your water. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to layer it again with seasoning. I know some of you guys are like, that's too much. No, you want some flavor? You got to put seasoning in your food. Not a whole lot, just enough. So you're going to add some more black pepper. Do that according to your liking. 
to make real homemade brown gravy, you're gonna need some black pepper. So I would suggest a tablespoon. A tablespoon of garlic. A pinch of salt. Not too much, because we got some salt coming. And you're gonna allow this to brown. Just it's gonna get become a dark colored brown. You don't need to add no milk or nothing. It's gonna brown on its own. And this is gonna take probably five minutes if you have your eye up high. But you're gonna watch it turn color. Okay, everyone. Now you see how brown that is. You're gonna smell it where it's like it's smelling like it's almost burnt. And that's how you get the home flavor. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get some water, a hot water, a cup full, not a small measuring cup, but like a drinking cup. And you're gonna put hot water in that. And if you have a beef bouillon, mix the beef bouillon with it. But I'm using the beef, the rest of that beef onion pack that I had, and I mixed it in my water. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pour it, mix it together, and you're gonna pour that into here. Pour it in a little bit at a time so that you can get the proper desired thickness of your gravy. Because once it cooks, it's gonna get thick. You see that? You see the thick? So I'm gonna add more water, because I need more. And I'm gonna add in a little bit at a time. I'm not gonna pour it all in at once because you don't want to make it your gravy watery. You don't want it too thick and you don't want it too thin. So I'm gonna add some more. Make sure that stuff mixed in there good. Make sure it's mixed in there good. Stir it until good desired thickness. Okay. Now you guys see that? See that? Once it cooks on, it's going to thicken up the gravy is. So let's give that a minute. And you're gonna see the bubbles sticking up. And at this point, the rest of the onions that I had chopped up, I'm gonna put those onions in there as well. Onions give homemade brown gravy a wonderful flavor. Especially when you're making something like this. You're still gonna add a little more black pepper. And you're gonna add some more salt. Just a day up. But you don't have to add that salt that's optional because the beef onion flavor has salt in it. Now once it's cool, it gets thick. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the burgers back to the gravy so that they can cook all the way through. And they get that gravy flavor. And those juices that came out of there, add that to your gravy also, because that helps with the flavor. And this is how you make it from scratch. And you're gonna allow that to heat up to a boil. And once it heats up to a boil, you're gonna turn it back down to a simmer. And you're gonna simmer it for a little while, maybe about four or five, maybe five to 10 what minutes. Know what you took? Okay, you guys, these are the, the boiling bubbles that I'm speaking about. You want your gravy to boil. Then you're gonna turn it down to a simmer because it is getting thicker. Turn it down to simmer because you've got your burgers in there, your steak, your hamburger steak patties in there. And you want them to get the flavor from the gravy into the burger. So turn it down and, and allow that to simmer. I would say about five minutes since it's on the skillet. Um, so I'm 
Some people, if you're going to put it in the oven, I would put it in there for about 5 to 10 minutes. You don't want it to simmer too long because you don't want your burgers to get too tender and fall apart. But this is how you get that good gravy flavor on the inside of your burger. I know some people, they want their burger on a plate separate and then they put the gravy on top of it. But this is how I do mine, and I know that this is extremely flavorful. Now I'm going to flip the burgers over so the other side can also get the gravy flavor. Now if you make more gravy than I do, it may cover your burgers automatically, but mine didn't. And also taste the gravy as you're cooking it. I've been doing it so long, I know exactly what it tastes like. I've been cooking this gravy since I was about 12 years old. My mom taught me how to make it. But I taste tested in front of you guys, so you'll know that it's good. Mmm, it's good. I um, don't think I want to do is add me a little more black pepper. That's it. On the next, this grape right here is spot on. Make sure you add the seasoning because flour doesn't have any flavor to it. And this gravy, like I said, is not a packet gravy. This is straight scratch. And you want that flavor in your burgers. Now, some people may not like the Worcestershire sauce flavor. If you don't, don't put that in there. Um, I did, so that's why I added it. And it's good. It makes your burgers juicy and they don't lose juice. Now I'm going to get ready to prepare some rice to go with this. And once the rice is done, I'll be back to show you a picture of the finished product. And for those of you who don't know how to cook rice, for every cup of rice, you need to add two cups of water and allow it to boil. Don't touch it, don't do anything to it, just allow it to boil. Okay, everyone, I have some mixed um, vegetables, the corn, the sweet peas, and the green beans and carrots. I'm going to add this to my um, hamburger steak dinner for the kids. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of, it's the frozen kind, a half a tablespoon of Maggie Polio. Well, let me go ahead and add a tablespoon so I can get that chicken flavor. We already have the water in there, so we don't have to add anything else. And then, some onion powder to taste. That's about a half a tablespoon. And about a half a tablespoon of garlic. Because this is a small amount. My children may not eat it, that's why I didn't add that much. A half a tablespoon of black pepper and salt is already in the mango polio so I'm not going to add any more salt I only add a small amount of water because it's a lot of water already in here and um, you just let this boil for about five minutes and then it's done roughly five to six minutes okay everyone this is the finished product of my hamburger steak gravy and rice Look at the onions. It looks so good, doesn't it? Now, let me cut the meat open to show you guys that my meat is done. See that? And you see that it's still, it's not hard. And that it's tender. Let me um, taste this because it looks so good. You guys, this is so good. I wish you guys were here to eat this. Me and my grandbaby. 
we about to eat good today. And the other kids, too. Thanks for tuning in to my video. Have a great day.